the first pharmacy student to contest as the guild president at Makere University. And um, I'm told that his vote was, uh, was uh, his votes were not missed by around five. And uh, currently is contesting as a member of parliament, uh, Hole County. The second panelist is Dr. Maurice Cero, who has had enormous uh, time in, at the Ministry of Health and served in different positions as the as a principal pharmacist, as the acting uh, commissioner of pharmaceutical services, and currently he is the it is the, the Registrar Pharmacy Board. Uh, join me to welcome uh, uh, Angela Navakosa, uh, who is with, going to be with me as the co-host. Um, Angela yeah. Navakosa, you're most welcome. So, <laughs> our Third panelist is Dr. Francis Otim. I think he has not yet joined. I pray that he can join us soon. So Francis has had the, the opportunity to work at NDA and at the same time uh, PSU Council for a long time. Currently is the chief examiner at uh, PSU. So Angela, you can Introduce for us Martha and Gabriel. Angela, please unmute yourself. He A Manitan pharmacist here at Malago National Referral Hospital. I'm the head of Malago Pharmacy Interns. I'm privileged to be here and I thank you for giving me the honor to introduce our panelists. I welcome all our panelists. I'll be introducing Ape Gabriel Okia, who is a recent graduate from Makere University also an intern pharmacist at Mulago National Referral Hospital, attached to Uganda Heart Institute. Uh, he's currently working at Care Fort Pharmacy and he's providing pharmaceutical care, care, pro, pharmaceutical care. And he's currently the Secretary General Pharmacy Interns 2020, 2019, 2021. And the next panelist I'll be introducing is, you're welcome, uh, Dr. Gabriel Okia. Um, the next panelist will be Dr. Martha Ajulong. Dr. Martha Ajulong was a pharmacist at Soroti Regional Referral Hospital. She was promoted to principal pharmacist, Mulago National Referral Hospital. And now she has been transferred to Ministry of Health headquarters as principal pharmacist. She's a coordinator of pharmacy interns in Uganda and has a wide knowledge in hospital pharmacy and has been an outstanding member of Pharmaceutical Society of Uganda. You're welcome, Dr. Martha. Yes. Yes, um, I'll hand over the mic to Adeka Bonifest. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Angela, for the introduction. Dr. Gabriel, I, you can mute your mic. Okay. So um, I'm going to, 
I'm going to start with Dr. Dr. Gabriel Okia. You've heard he's an intern pharmacist at uh, at uh, uh, at uh, Mulago National Referral Hospital, and at the same time, uh, he is providing uh, pharmaceutical care yeah. at Carefort at Carefort Pharmacy. Chair, can I interrupt you a bit? Yes, please. I'll locate minutes to this me to each and every each and everyone because we need to finish by nine o'clock. I have another meeting already running. So I need to join that meeting immediately after this. Yes, uh, that's true. Uh, in the program that I gave to you, the minutes have been allocated and uh, we have just a change of questions. We shall be we shall be going through once, so you should be getting ready to answer questions at once, and then we shall we, sh we shall ensure that we get done by nine. Is that okay? Please. All right. So, uh, Dr. Gabriel Ipe. Yes, please. You have had the privilege to serve our pharmacy interns as the, the Secretary General. And um, unfortunately, uh, this a pandemic came set in when we are already six months almost uh, into internship. So I would like to know as a, a stu um, the intern leader, what challenges you could have faced uh, during uh, discharging your duties. And then at the same time, I would like to know uh, what your fellow interns could have also gone through and uh, what they could also still be facing at this particular moment. And um, within these remaining uh, periods that, uh, is, that we expect to still continue with internship, what challenges do you think you are still going to face and what are the possible ways forward that you think uh, should be sought? Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, moderators and uh, PSU for organizing this session. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, again, I'm Gabriel Ayepe Okia. Uh, it's my pleasure and honor to be part of this, this discussion. Uh, the first question that is, has been posed to me, if I recall very well, is what challenges have I faced as uh, an intern leader? Yes, I'm the Secretary General of Pharmacy Interns. However, I do not work in isolation. Uh, I work with a team of, a total team of three people. That is the president, which is Mr. Chamzi, and uh, the vice president, who is uh, Ms. Karunji Christine, and definitely me, who is the Secretary General. So. The, the challenges that uh, we've faced as intern leaders of pharmacy are not only faced by me, but the three of us who are uh, running the affairs of pharmacy interns. One of them I'll start straight away is zero facilitation. Our docket of pharmacy intern leaders is not facilitated, not by fellow interns or the ministry or the council. So you'll find that there are certain situations when um, the pharmacy intern leaders need to write letters, but they don't have stationery, we need to uh, go for a meeting probably with uh, the pharmacy interns coordinator or to the ministry or run for a meeting with FOMI. But uh, because there are no resources, we end up collecting um, monies within ourselves and send one person. At times, the one Karunja has to run from my internship site in Ruvaga to maybe Mulago where they meeting for, with FUMI is and at times it's hard. So I hereby um, implore that probably moving forward, forward um, the intern should always uh, adhere to some of the guidelines when they say that subscribe, say for example to FUMI we subscribe because I'm sure out of the 170 plus pharmacy interns that you have in the country, not even 10% have subscribed to FUMI. Yeah, yet somehow FUMI would help us uh, in running our affairs of uh, pharmacy interns. Uh, the other challenge I believe that we've got at times is uh, 
delayed responses from the pharmacy interns themselves. So I'll call upon my pharmacy interns. Once you're called, once a call is made to you, please always respond early. We like to be uh, the journey camlets, like to be pulled somehow. But moving forward, we're not going to be in times forever. We are going to be in uh, po responsible positions and we need to be very, very proactive. So I call upon the pharmacy interns who are prospective members of the society to always uh, be proactive than being pulled all the time. Uh, I think those are the two ch major challenges that we faced as uh, pharmacy intern leaders. So the second question, if I got you right, was what challenges have interns faced during uh, this, amidst the COVID pandemic? Well, uh, as the moderator said earlier, that uh, pharmacy interns are not immune to the effects of COVID. We are human, just like anyone. And uh, indeed, we've been uh, affected. I'll start right away with external rotations. Um, the external rotations should have started on 1st of April, but it was unfortunate that uh, by 18th of March, a lockdown was enacted in the country and we're not able to go for external rotations. So you find that the training of the training of pharmacists is does not only attach a pharmacist, does not only leave a pharmacist in direct contact with the patient, but also exposes us to uh, the man drug manufacturing aspects, drug regulation aspects at National Drug Authority. It also exposes us to supply chain management. So these are more or less like the indirect contact that the pharmacist has with the patient. Leave alone the hospital practice where by the indirect contact with the patient. So you find that these rotations were affected because once the lockdown was enacted, people are not able, companies are not able, were running on skeleton staff. So they're not in position to uh, take up uh, new, uh, new staff within their premises. So we were not able to go for those external rotations. And if I quote Dr. Tim's, Dr. Ogwang and the orientation saying that uh, pharmacy intern, as pharmacists, we need to think beyond pharmacy, pharmacy practice. I believe even going for these external rotations would help us build our social, our social capital. And still, as Dr. Guang said, that you should also think of families. Probably some of my friends like Bagua or Ambrose or Karunji would have met some of their, maybe would be family members or soulmates that side. Uh, so for the issue of external rotations, I know internship will come to an end, but probably the council would think of uh, as the in, uh, post internship, if there's a person in particular, say a one at the carbon phase wants to have uh, an exposure at NDA, I request that probably the, the council of the society uh, would write introductory letters to such members who are interested in having an exposure in these environments. Then the other issue that, the other challenge that we faced was the CPDs. Every, every Thursdays, the, the intern pharmacists within the Kampala region used to have CPDs. That is from eight up to uh, 9 a.m. And I believe that's the reason as to why even probably this uh, webinar happened within the stipulated time of the CPDs. And Dr. Massa had outsourced most of the uh, supervisors, most of the facilitators. But still, with the ban on uh, public gatherings, we could not crowd in the small room at the Anatomy Lecture Theater, and we are not in position to have the CPDs. So still, maybe I'll request uh, the society through the Education Committee to organize for us uh, CPDs in form of webinars. I believe Dr. Martha, our coordinator, can still be in position to bring on board the facilitators that she had already uh, arranged uh, to always come to Mlago and give us uh, CPDs. I'll talk about accommodation. Um, Dr. Gabriel, you can summarize. Uh, yes, I, I'm summarizing please, one, two, please, please. an accommodation. We have some, in, some, in, some reallocations from the Minister of Health. You find that some interns were moved amid the COVID time. Some interns from Entebbe were moved and so were interns from Berica. So you find these people moved to new sites and it was hard for them to get accommodation amid these harsh times. So probably the council should advocate for uh, more accommodation for all in, in interns, not selective interns. You'll find maybe only medicines interns are having accommodations, the other ones don't have accommodation. 
Then the issue of transport is biting hard. You'll find that the transport costs right now are very, very high. And because they're not accommodated, I know of a one student who will travel from Seta to Mulago every day to and fro to, for his internship site, for his internship, and he spends more than 20000 on transport. That's about 600000 at the end of the month. And you're getting about 700000 or 750000 So you remain with nothing. Only if the ministry was had upped our allowance from 750 to something, maybe 1.5 or even 2 million on a good day, would be in position to manage, to sustain ourselves within these times. My last challenge that I believe in terms of uh, our first is the psychological trauma, the psychological torture that COVID has worn on them. We are faced with uncertainty at the moment because we do not know after 30th of September where the internship is really supposed to end. Is the internship going to hang on there? Is this internship going to end or it's going to be pushed forward? And is the exam there or not there? So people are traumatized. And we are thinking, yeah, there is an exam coming up. Is there a possibility of using our assessment that we that they always use from as we move from rotation to rotation inside the hospital? Is there a possibility of using those marks to let us go on? Or is there a possibility of the society, of the council declaring a state of an emergency and say, okay, amid this, this hard time, this constraints, the psychological trauma, this people working in strenuous conditions, in high-risk environments, can we allow them register? It is, it is, it's a hard time. It's a peculiar moment. It's a peculiar moment. It's a hard time. It has never been there, but it can happen. The, 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 the chief examiner, I'm sure, will tell us this later. He might decide to declare a state of emergency and say, even the prospective interns who are coming, because there's no time, let, because the universities have assessed them completely, let them go on and join the internship. Because I believe we do not down, doubt the quality of our universities and even the quality of the training that our supervisors in the hospitals give us. So I believe that should be uh, put into consideration and say, state of emergency, this time, let's not register. We can't, let's not um, go through the whole hustle of this exam and we let the pharmacists register. And because I know the public is yearning for our services, they want us to provide for much to care to them. There's a deficiency. Thank you, uh, moderator. I beg to end there. Wow, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gabriel Ipe, for your submission. Uh, I am going to Dr. Martha. Dr. Martha, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Martha, you've heard uh, what uh, the, the, the pharmacy intern has talked about, the challenges they've faced. And, um, and uh, the things that uh, are running in their mind at this particular time. Uh, I was wondering, you as the supervisor of the interns, could you have also come across some of these challenges? And as you know, um, uh, that uh, we were supposed to go for external rotations. But now we see that we already have only two months uh, barely two months left. So do you still think that uh, there is a feasibility for at least one external rotation? And then uh, the other question could be that uh, in case we are not going to do this, could you be having some options maybe uh, for us in terms of maybe uh, uh, a webinar or a seminar to try to cover up uh, probably what we should have done uh, during the external rotation. Thank you. Hello. You can hear me? Yes, we can. We can. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for this webinar. It has been a long time that we have not interacted. But we need to thank God that he, this pandemic came and it is teaching us a lot of things. I would like to apologize on behalf of interns for what they are going through. It is not our making that this is going, it has affected you. Maybe you are a unique group of interns 
that is uh, being affected in this year. But all in all, do not get scared. I want to tell you that previously, from 2003 backwards, 2004, 2003 backwards, interns never used to have external rotations. But people would sit the PSU exams and pass. So do not get scared. The only things we are going to guide you is through discussions. And uh, I am going to get the, the, the people who are going to give you these presentations. If the, it is going through to be in a webinar, I don't know who's going to organize for that. I've seen Angela has been organizing them. Then we can go ahead. But um, I already have some people who are ready to give you some webinars from um, NDA. They're ready to talk to you and um, many others, but only they want the channel. How are they going to communicate to you? Even GMS is ready for that. So don't get worried. Only that we are going to encourage you to go through discussions. We shall be in touch so that we can what? Have these discussions go on, but do not run away from your stations. We are going to make sure that you are going to be discussing so that you can pass through your exams. External rotations. I already talked to a number of our organizations and they are like, no, we are not going to take interns. And I personally, I see that you are going to risk yourselves. Someone can take you and put you on the front line. Like for example, in National Drug Authority, you would be the one, the intern will be the one to be sent to Entebbe, to Nakawa, all these spots of entry. And that is where the risk is. And you'll be, you will catch the virus. Nobody will what? Look into it. Because there were already such laws that went through. You were considered as students. So you were not as even supposed to come for work. That is the circular that I saw in Mulago. So during the lockdown, that's why you saw that most of the people were not asking for interns. Even intern doctors were affected. And what I realized that most of you were locked out. Some of you, the lockdown found you in your villages. So beginning this issue of uh, extra, uh, rotating you people would have caused a lot of havoc and exposed you that you are not around. So that one, external rotations. If the lockdown is completely lifted, then we can have a few people going for external rotations, but at the moment we can't. Every organization I have talked to, they are not willing because they are not, they, most of the monies have been allocated for COVID-19 fight. So don't worry, the exams, you will pass them even without external rotations. And then um, the other issue is interns, please be going to work. This is how they are going to see you, your presence at work. And then the other one is, please, when you're at the workplace, wear masks. I have seen, met interns not wearing masks. If the masks are not there, please stop dispensing to patients without masks. Unless the patient has got a mask, then you can go ahead and dis dispense to these patients. Do not risk yourself because you want to be available there your life comes first then the service because when you die you know they will replace you immediately so please wear masks when you're at work at the workplace and also wear the clinical coat this came out strongly during my handover when i was moving to ministry of health we the in pharmacists nobody knows us even intern pharmacists are not wearing uniform so please put on your uniform I told you that write your name and put their intern pharmacist so that they can know you. That uniform protects you because you are going to leave that uniform 
at workplace and move home. You're not going to take that uniform. Please take that one seriously. And um, uh, it's unfortunate that the interns were not taken through on how to prevent themselves during uh, on how to manage uh, the COVID. Because you find that some of the interns were not around, so you could not just pick a handful for, of interns. Even uh, most of the pharmacists were not taken through, but we shall have to find a way of uh, having that done so that you are able to protect yourselves from COVID. COVID is still there. We are still getting cases of people who are turning positive. So let's be careful. And then issues of transport. Yes, interns has had problems of transport during, these are the challenges I'm giving now. Interns had challenges of transport. The hospital <clears throat> decided to pick only the government staffs. So the interns were left out. Not only you, but the nurse interns, the doctors, all of you were left out. So do not worry about this, that the COVID has affected you. You are not affected. Because the satchelor came from public service, that is only the government staffs that were supposed to work during the time of the lockdown. But now the lockdown has been eased, you can please come to work and do your work well. And then um, the int during the COVID lockdown, there was a rotation made by the Minister of Health, you make committee. Some interns had requested to move to other places, but uh, I am really so sorry for the interns that were moved to Kawempe. They have been tossed up and down. And uh, I even had to call the pharmacist of Kawempe that those are your interns. They were actually moved by the UMIC committee during the COVID, so you have to receive them. Because these interns have been telling me that they rejected them, they need a letter from me. I am not the I am not UMIC. I am just a, a representative of UMIC. So the pharmacist needed to receive the interns because it was a posting instruction from Minister of Health. So what has happened now is that. This has been a uh, long overdue. They wanted the coordination of internship to be at the Minister of Health. So now we are fortunate that I'm at the Minister of Health, so the coordination is going to be moved to Minister of Health. We have been pulling ropes with our Minister of Health because of that. They were like, how can the coordinator be seated in Molago and yet all this should be at Minister of Health? So I think that is a privilege for the interns. So please do not hesitate to contact me or come to me at the Minister of Health because that okay. is where now the coordination will be. Yes, Dr. Martha, your time has yeah, gone. I can do it. And Thank then you, I wanted to echo something on assessment. You have not been all assessed from January. Am I wrong? Have you been assessed? Yeah. Uh, at Gulu here, we've been assessed. Good, but those ones who have not been assessed, can you please look for your supervisors and you'll be assessed? Because some people will use this as a way of making you to repeat. Kindly look for them. External CPDs, I am going to look into that. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Martha, for that uh, elaborate uh, submission. And I, I think now I, I will go straight to Dr. Francis Otim. I don't know whether he can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, so uh, Dr. Francis, um, I want to uh, begin from uh, the submission from the student leader yeah, that uh, is, is wondering whether amid these challenges that we've been, that the council can waive off exams and uh, because they have been traumatized a lot. Uh, and if not, uh, are we, 
going to be eligible to sit for these exams, given the fact that we have not uh, done the external rotations. And then um, at the same time, we also would like to know whether uh, these exams are going to be in the same framework that it has always been. Uh, are the questions going to cover all the areas or there is a special provision for these exams this time around? Thank you. You can unmute. You can unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. We can hear now. Okay. So I'm saying thank you so much, uh, Dr. Boniface, and everyone for organizing this webinar to allow senior council members interact with the interns directly, and also to assure you that despite the difficulties we are going through. Definitely the exam will be there. You have all read the Pharmacy and Drugs Act. It is a requirement that you undergo 12 months internship training, being supervised by senior pharmacists. Then after the internship, you are required to sit the final examination for admission for membership to the society. So interns, please read and be prepared, the examination cannot be waived. Uh, somebody says a state of emergency should be declared and um, the exam is waived. It is the president through the parliament to declare a state of emergency. And when a state of emergency is cleared, everything comes to a standstill. So let's not even speak about that. I'm going to table in the council the best way we can do the exams. We need a bigger hall because currently Makere may not, um, the rooms where we used to have exams may not be enough. So we have to look for a bigger hall where we can have uh, the spacings available that will call for additional cost to the interns. But council also can look at a way of maybe meeting that cost, because a hall like Mulwana Hall in uh, Lugogo uh, Lugo Showground, the hall is higher than two million. But Makere, we used to pay around 450,000 only. So that means the cost would be high if we were to do the exam in a bigger hall. So my appeal to interns, please read. As to the content of the exam, the examination will cover all areas. Much as you are in the hospital, you're supposed to read about drug manufacturing. You're supposed to consult people or senior pharmacists who are in drug manufacturing. So I really call upon you to really revise all the areas which are examinable. We want you to be a complete pharmacist not incomplete pharmacist, okay? And what I can only assure you is to ensure that we have a fair assessment by the examiner, but all areas will be examined in a, a fair way. So please, all interns, revise all other areas of pharmacy practice for pre-registration exam. You have the reading guide, National Drug Authority Act, the Pharmacy and Drugs Act, drug supply chain, drug manufacturing, uh, pharmaceutical calculation, pharmaceutical care, clinical pharmacy, that will make you a complete pharmacist. And senior colleagues, this is the time you must be very close with your senior colleagues to guide you wherever you are or make phone calls 
to senior colleagues, not to examiners, but to senior colleagues to guide you. My examiners are not allowed to guide students. So please be prepared. We will try have our best. If the situation uh, remains like this, I think October there will be exam. I will table, as I said, I will table in the council the best way to do that exam. I'm assuring all interns that you will have your exams and you will be registered. Recently, we registered the group that sat in February. The, the registrar, pharmacy board will talk about that. So you shouldn't be worried that you will not be registered. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Francis Otim, for the precise submission and timekeeping. I applaud you for that. I would like to welcome Dr. Angela Nabakoza to take on the next panelist. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Adeka. My questions are to Dr. Opio. Dr. Opio, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay. The first question is, has the council advised the ministry about the next course of action in the wake of a disoriented rotation of internal pharmacies during the COVID-19 crisis? If not, what has it done? And then, for those who might want exposure in their area of interest at post internship, for example, like the regulation, the community, the community, and then industry, and then so on, are there peculiar implications of not having external rotations in terms of employment and future career? Those are the questions. Um, thank you, and uh, I want to add my voice on appreciating the moderator, Dr. Boniface and team for organizing uh, this webinar. I'll make about uh, five responses, uh, but first I want to just respond to what pro uh, proposals that have been given earlier on the first submission by Gabriel, that, uh, you know, as the council, since we don't doubt uh, what Makere trains, we don't doubt the Ministry of Health, we should waive and accept. Uh, I want to emphasize that um, you look at this as a relay race. When Makere completes their part, they hand over their button to the internship centers. When the internship centers complete their portion, they hand over the button to PSU. A button is not just a piece of metal. It is a set of responsibility. So when we hold that button, we are holding a set of responsibility. And I've always said over and over again that Makere will be with you for four years. Mulago will be with you at the internship center for one year. But PSU has to be with you for life. Till death do us part. That's what I can define it as. So it's important that we understand the perspective of it. It is not that we do not recognize the institutions or recognize the universities. It is that we are taking up responsibility and this responsibility, we're taking it for life because once you're a member, you become a member uh, for life. Uh, secondly, I want to highlight that the COVID pandemic has caused global, national, and also uh, local disruptions across everywhere. And what is happening now, we're beginning to see what we have been calling the creation of a new normal. That new normal, I look at is like the face of a person. And it is a process, it is not an event. Everyone is thinking, how should the face of this new normal look? Should it have two eyes? Should it have two ears? If it has two eyes, should it be at the same level? If it has one nose, should it be on the left? Should it be on the right? Should it be at the center? So we need to understand that. We're in the process of reshaping, redrawing, redesigning, redefining. New things are being defined. You've seen so many changes that have happened. Greeting used to be a standard operating procedure. Now it is changing that greeting with the hands is actually unhealthy. So we're seeing so many things happen. Now coming to us as the council, first we need to understand is as a council, our structure is that we have 12 members out of it, eight are elected, four are appointed by the minister. So we have four representatives from the ministry. 
Therefore, the issue or the question about are we in touch with the ministry is a continuous process because they're already a part of us. We have the registrar of the board that is part of us. We have the coordinator of the internship who's also within the Ministry of Health that is part of us. So we have continuous interaction. I also want to highlight that the mandate of the council as defined in the Pharmacy and Drugs Act is to secure the highest practicable standards in the practice of pharmacy. And I always want to emphasize that it is the highest practicable, not the average, not the good, not the medium, the highest practicable standards in the practice of pharmacy. When you bring it down to internship, what will the highest standards entail? It means that your scope of internship practice, as Francis has clearly highlighted on the examination, should cover all the areas, all the examinable areas must be covered from the community to the hospital, to regulatory, to industry, to research, supply chain and logistics. We must cover that whole area itself. And we're not just doing it for the sake, we're doing it for a number of reasons. One, we want to ensure that the employer out there has expectations. He has an expectation that the pharmacists that are registered can work in any of those environments. And they have the trust that once PSU has released them, they are, have that capability with them. So it is a set of responsibility that when we are handing over to an employer, we know that you have those capabilities with you. But even the public has the trust that the pharmacists that I've gone to can be able to address my need. I've always responded to this before, where people have asked me, why are we setting questions on clinical pharmacy? Why, leave, why don't you leave out questions on industrial pharmacy? And I keep telling them, you're not going to go to a pharmacy and you know a patient comes to you and you tell them they come to you with pruritis and you tell them, you see, I'm sorry, I only studied about headache, cough and flu. I one day met a set of people and you know, they said the average medical practitioner now can only manage six conditions, cough, flu, headache, malaria. When it goes beyond the six, then it's a big challenge. You've just seen the situation we're having with the LDUs. You know, six months training and they are being released. And we are seeing those challenges that are emerging. So we want to ensure that what is released out to the public can meet their needs. That is very, very critical for us to understand that. And I always try to give an analogy from the industry point of view. You cannot release a raw material as a finished product. You must ensure that raw material goes through all the processes and then have it released as a finished product. So the whole scope must be covered during the examination. It also has to be covered during the internship itself. That is very, very fundamental to highlight that. Now, having said that, what is then the way forward in the light of this pandemic? As PSU, what we've been trying to do is to do a benchmark. You've seen different countries, different institutions have come up with different proposals. We've just seen recently for Kenya, they say, you know, we are giving a dead academic year. And the rationale is that what is important right now is to survive, not to thrive. So anything that is linked to survival is what their focus is on. We've also seen, uh, I've been in a meeting yesterday and there have been some proposals in, 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 in a number of activities that are pharmacy related. Uh, virtual approaches. Is there scope for a virtual approach, especially going into the challenges of the external rotations? The only challenge is that the law defines that you must complete a period of practical training. So when we say practical, to what extent does practical start and where does it stop? So these are areas that we're exploring out of what is remaining. Is there a scope? For example, under industry, there's a percentage that could be covered through a virtual process itself. Even under the JMS rotations, there could be a percentage, especially because even in the industry, there's the classroom training, there's the self-observational kind of training where people can observe and learn. Then there's the practical where you actually get the hands-on. So we need to pick out what percentage of those external rotations could we be able to have it covered possibly through virtual means. This is something that we are strongly, uh, strongly looking at. And then the part that remains, how then do we fill that gap? That is the big question that we are still trying to answer uh, in itself. Because unlike uh, sectors such as accounting, where you can actually remotely do a virtual internship for the whole 100% of the internship, that can, can, can be handled virtually. But when it comes to pharmacy, when it comes to NDA, you know, we're looking at that. But remember, we also want to ensure right now that your lives are protected. We'll give an example. 
I you know as Sipla, we still currently are not taking returns. And one of the reasons is every, every day, we're receiving more than two trailers coming in, bringing in raw materials. And these are coming from, from all the way from Mombasa. This, that's a very high risk. It's a high risk group that is entering the facility on a daily basis. We do not want to put other people, you know, outside our, our staff within that in harm's way. And so it is really important that, uh, that even as we think about how to balance all these, the biggest priority is to ensure that lives are protected and preserved. So we will continue to explore more options. It is still very difficult, I must say, at this time for us to define uh, to what extent this external rotation shall be ha happening. But the first step, I believe, is to look at the virtual element to cover that and then see how we can get better ways of addressing the different uh, gaps itself. So in conclusion, um, just to give you all hope, that you don't need to be demoralized. I've seen the statement that disoriented it turns. I don't think it's a disorientation. It is realignment, not disorientation that we want. It is realignment, repurposing, redesigning, redrawing, and addressing those challenges that continue to face us. So let's uh, have hope. As uh, Dr. Otima has clearly said, the exam is going to be there. What is going to change most likely is the modalities on how those exams are going to be done. Because we must remember at the end of the day, the legal obligations have not changed. COVID has changed things, but it has not changed the legislations. The legislations still stand. And we must ensure that whatever we do, we comply with the legislation. Thank you. OK, thank you, Dr. Sam. See you. We shall go straight to the questions. Okay. We shall go straight to the question. Dr. Idis has a question. Yes. Uh, can I answer that? Ma Hello? Dr. Master, to answer that. How are the super... Yes. How... Okay. Yes. Uh, I want to inform Edith that uh, before the lockdown, you guys were working. You worked for two solid months and a half, up to 20, up to 30th. The lockdown was affected on the 30th. So they should be able to assess you for that first, the first three months. Am I wrong? You people have worked from January up to the 28th there. The lockdown was affected on the 30th of March. That is what I know. So I want, we want that assessment. I know the interns of Mulango have not been assessed right from January. We want that assessment done. And then this after the lock uh, from April going forward. The lockdown was lifted there around May. So I think we lost only one month and a half. So we should be able to assess the interns also. So if these assessments are not done, it is going to bring a heavy blow on the interns. So kindly interns from Molago, make sure that those supervisors assess you. Because what I know, you worked from January up to March. That assessment is needed. And actually all the supervisors, all the other cadres, that is nursing and uh, medical doctors, submitted the assessments at Ministry of Health. It is only intern pharmacists that are missing. So how will I defend you when, uh, when issues arise? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mata. I think that has been cleared. We shall go straight to Dr. Cyril Morris. Dr. Cyril Morris, are you there? Hello? Dr. Morris, are you there? Hello? Dr. Hello? Morris, yes. Okay, the next questions go to you. 
we can hear you. Mm. So the first question is, me. in case the minister yes. to okay. extends internship, yes, we can hear you. The okay, first question on, is, me. in case the ministry extends internship period for a legitimate reason, if any, shall this affect reduced duration timeline? And then the next one, what has the, the pharmacy division Minister of Health done so far in engaging the ministry's internship committee concerning the impediments encountered by pharmacy interns during the COVID-19? And recently, the health minister came out and first a communique that interns shouldn't be retained, but rather hold a possibility of being recruited on a short-term basis. What is your elucidation on this? Yes, Dr. Mwen, yeah. Uh, thank you for the question. And uh, first, I want to thank you for organizing this meeting. Straight to your question, this is not the first time that... Uh, I know the biggest problem here is internship will, can be extended not because you haven't finished the program. It will be extended because the new, the student who should have replaced you will not, will not have finished what? Their course. And it will be extended because, you know, intern doctors, intern pharmacists, intern nurses are offer labor to that facilities. So if you go, there'll be a gap. But the good thing, it's not the first time that this thing is happening. Sometime back, I think in the late 90s, there was a strike at Macquarie University, and the student then didn't finish. So the, what, the, what happened, they allowed those who were who are doing internship to finish. They finished and got registered, but requested them to stay around for some time until the other people come in. And most likely, when I was discussing, I discussed, I discussed this with some directors, most likely that's what's going to happen. You'll finish your internship, but you may be requested to stay around until we get a new set of interns. In summary, you'll finish, you'll be registered, but you'll be requested to stay until other intern comes. Have I answered that one? Hello? Hello? Uh, yes, yes. That. Have you heard me? Yes. Yeah. That's what is likely to happen. And two, it may not be. It may not be compulsory. They may request those who want to stay. Hmm? You get. And I've been. Dis I've discussed this yesterday. I was in Imbarara. I discussed it with the tans in Imbarara. That if that is if that request is done, I do beg that you also stay. Because the implication, if we move, then we will leave a gap in the hospitals. Hello? Okay. Hmm. We are hearing. Okay, we yes, no. Hearing. Yeah, that's, 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 that's my take on that. And that's just like it happened. And of course, the final decision will be made by the National Internship Committee. But that's, what, that's, that's, the, that's how they are likely to, that's the direction they are likely to take. Thank you. What was the other question? Thank you for being summarized, Dr. Smith. The other question was recently mm -hmm. the health minister came out and passed on a community that interns shouldn't be retained. But okay, but that one has been answered. Yeah, actually, everything has been answered. Thank you, Dr. Morris. Okay, okay. Uh, there is, uh, we shall go to questions now. Hmm. I've got two questions. There is a question about, um, I think this one, Dr. Masa will, Dr. Masa, yes, Dr. Masa will answer. There is a question about the pharmacy interns who had already like done the pre-registration exam, the ones who did it before, like the ones who are from, the ones from Kampala International University, and then they are wondering how they are not being considered, when do they come in? That's what they're asking. Uh, 
Hello, Angela, I think we can Hello, give Dr. that question. I don't see Dr. Martha. Is she? Okay. Dr. Martha? I think uh, we can give that question to Dr. Francis. Yes, what is it? Hello? It's about interns. Yes. The, the, the people who have already sat their exams in February. Mm. What is their fate? When do they expect to start internship? What do you mean? No, uh, we are the, normally the committee sits in uh, October. The UMIC committee sits in October. That is when, uh, actually, late September, when you people are being say, uh, passed out, this is the, the you are lot now. You are always released around 25th of September, and then the next interns begin in October. So there is nothing wrong yet. We are still in, we have just begun July. So let them not get scared. The most important thing is that you people are passed out by October, I mean, September. And then also I would like to ask Francis that this exam should not take place in October. We had agreed as council that we give always interns one month to prepare or three weeks. So let the exam take place maybe in November like it has been because uh, immediately when they are released you know uh, september they will not be able to have time to to do the revision to prepare themselves and what i realized is that when we say that exam is in october and the interns are released in september the last three months from now july interns start cutting work they stop going to work because they need to go and revise so when you give them that one month or three weeks, it gives them breathing space. So please, Francis, as head of the chief examiner, please try to consider that. Thank you. Dr. Francis, could you respond uh, to that? Yes, uh, Boniface, can you hear me? Yes, 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 I can hear you. Thank you so much. Let me add my voice to Martha and to Maurice that uh, I think the pharmacist interns, they are lucky in the sense that we will not have a gap. In February, about 126 students sat, about 100 passed. So we already have 100 pending intern pharmacists. So when the UMIC committee sits, Martha and Maurice will be able to inform that at least the pharmacy profession is well covered. Released the current interns when they finished because we have a hundred in waiting. So we are so lucky and unique that we will not have the gap. That's the first thing I want to, to, to say, that we already have a hundred interns in waiting. So we will not have a gap when the current interns are released. Then about the examination, yes, uh, we always receive you, the interns, once you are released by your supervisor through Martha and through the National uh, Internship Committee, the UMI. So I always take guidance from the internship committee and the council to set the date for exam. If Martha presents the way she has presented, the exam can be the last week of October or the first or second week of November. There's no problem to that. I always comply with guidance from the National Internship Committee and the pharmacist supervisors headed by Martha. So the date is no problem. We'll agree on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor, for for elaborating more about that. The next question goes to Doctor Opio, and Samuel is asking: Is it possible for one to do rotations in NDA after the exam on a personal basis through the help of PSU, especially for those who have interest in regulation? Yeah, we. We've had the discussions with uh, 
NDA before about that. And uh, one of the things that NDA had actually proposed, they actually wanted to, it's actually more, not internship as such, but a mentorship program. And they were very willing to have that arrangement, especially towards their licensing period to be able to hold uh, a number of uh, pharmacists who can be able to come there. So it will be more as a, it's as a mentorship program, but it is not as part of the internship program. The challenge, of course, has been that because of this COVID-19 setback, that has been affected. And as I said, we're just trying to revise and see how can we ensure if we have to have these arrangements proceed and hinder what needs to be done. Possibly the numbers will be less, um, the scope will be different. You may have to restrict yourself to, to one section, like possibly inspectorate or just only the lab rather than having a rotation within that. So yes, it is very possible. And it is something that we're looking at as part of strengthening our mentorship programs. But as I said, uh, that will not be part of the, the considered as part of the internship. Internship has to be completed uh, within those that pre defined period and be assessed and concluded at home. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sam and uh, all the panelists for your time and the submission. And thank you so much to uh, the attendees for this uh, uh, webinar. I am able to see quite a number of people. I'm, supposed to, I'm seeing uh, Stella Nanyonga, pharmacist at the Ministry of Health. I'm seeing uh, Jennifer from South Africa. Uh, it has been quite good. Uh, our time is up and um, we would like to uh, apologize for the questions that may not be answered at this time. So we are going to uh, get these questions, uh, submit them to uh, the panelists, and then they will answer at, at, an, at another time, and then we will bring back the questions to you. But for now, we would like to have uh, concluding remarks from, uh, from the panelists. And uh, I'm going to start with uh, uh, Samuel, and then we will go in that same order. Samuel, Maurice, Francis, Martha, and then uh, Gabriel. Okay, let's have Martha after Sam. Thank you. Yeah, because I'm All right. Yeah, let me take this opportunity to thank you all for being part of this um, one of the, I think, largest sessions we've ever had as a webinar. Uh, I think one of the things we need to learn, I always tell people, we should learn to look for opportunity within the adversity, rather than look, cry about the adversity within the opportunity. And as you can see today, we are 82. I don't know if there's been any larger gathering of interns that is larger than this. 100% attendance, 100% timekeeping. So let <laughs> us learn about how to utilize opportunities within. That's the first thing. The second thing, is to say that there are new opportunities that are growing up. We've been in very close contact with the Ministry of Public Service. There's a proposed new structure for pharmacists that is coming up. And it's going to look at having pharmacists at the district level. We're going to see having pharmacists as clinical pharmacists at different specialties, more pharmacists at the Ministry of Health, uh, almost more than about 500 positions that could potentially be created. So let's begin to position ourselves and prepare ourselves for this. And lastly, I want to say is that we as council, we want to ensure that you're able to go through the whole internship process. And this is key because we don't want you to be disadvantaged when it comes to competing for positions uh, when you're applying for jobs. So we want to ensure that we'll do whatever it takes uh, through the, any innovative approaches. And if you have any ideas, please continue to share. I know state of emergency was a bit fat fed idea, but I believe there are more ideas that can come up and we see how to help each other. Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much, Dr. Pia. Martha. Thank you very much. I would like to thank you, the, the organizers of this webinar. Thank you so much. It has been so interactive. I would like to tell you the interns, do not start panicking. As I've already said, in those years before, people never used to go for any rotation, but they were passing these exams. You have everything at hand. So only embrace the discussions, the other people that are going to give in uh, CPDs and all that, I'll be in touch with Angela. 
So they are the ones to tell me I, we need this with this area to be clarified. And I will get you someone to clarify that area. So don't keep quiet. Always call me and I will help you out. And uh, I also want to you to help us, help me. Tell colleagues to stop going to senior colleagues that I want to go to NDA, I want to go here, I want to go there. We've already told you life is precious. Because I've already got calls from NDA, some of you people have got to NDA and you are requesting, can you be placed? And I was called by NDA that we cannot have placements. We are already downsizing the number of staffs. Kindly just let us do what is within our means. The COVID has come to teach us something. There is a positive and negatives. So please let us take, embrace the positive side also. What is COVID? We have to learn something from this. Maybe it's trying to teach us the Africans that technology is very important. So let's embrace that. I am very happy that the attendance is very big today. If we could have this, even the CPDs, that would be well and good. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I can leave you right now. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, let's have Dr. Maurice Cero. Is she? Has he gone? I think he has gone. Let's go to Francis. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear. We can hear. Yeah. Thank you, Boniface. Thank you, all the panelists. Thank you, the interns. I'm so impressed uh, if 82 are online. So Boniface, I think you should use this as a way of conducting CPD. Members, senior members of the society are available to give mentorship to the interns. We shouldn't look down on everything. Remember, Dr. Sam always says that your success can only be delayed, but cannot be denied. The whole world is in standstill. So I don't want to hear that the interns are demoralized. What happened if this was a war? Okay? Boniface, you and I, even Martha, we, we come from a, a highly war-prone area. We suffered for nearly 20 years. But here we are. Did we give up? So I don't want any intern to give up. You must put on your hammer. I want to emphasize, Martha, that if you are in any setting, please be on uniform. The uniform, number one, is your identification. And two, it is protection. On the 6th of January, I paid an impromptu visit to Fort Fortal Hospital. I asked to meet the interns. Three of them came without lab coats. I chased them away. Said, you are not my student. I'm not meeting you. In the other hand, when I had a stopover in Mubende Hospital, you know, all the four interns came fully dressed up in uniform. I applauded them. Actually, I promised them a BNF each. I should organize and send them for being very organized. So all interns, at all time in your station, be in uniform. It is identification and protection. The exam is there. Be prepared. We will fairly examine you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Francis, uh, for that uh, uh, advice you've given to the interns. And I think uh, they have listened and they will follow it accordingly. Uh, let's have uh, Gabriel. Uh, thank you, uh, Boniface and Angela for moderating this session. And also again, um, thank uh, the management of the pharmaceutical state of Uganda for making this possible. And I, I will thank uh, my fellow interns for attending. And I will thank uh, all the panelists for making uh, very vivid uh, uh, ex explanations to the fate of our 
to our fate amid this uh, uh, COVID. To the interns, as you can hear, you've heard from the chief examiner that uh, reggae is still going on. Reggae cannot be stopped. So in short, the exams are on. So I pledge uh, that we all um, read and make sure we pass. I wish everyone the very best in this remaining month of internship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel, uh, for uh, letting us know that the reggae is still on. Yes, uh, reggae is so strong. Yeah. So uh, let me allow Angela to give a vote of thanks to the panelists, and then we shall close this meeting. Uh, thank you, Abeka. I take this opportunity to thank everyone who has been with us during this webinar. It has been a cultural webinar because most of our queries have been answered. I thank all the panelists for giving us their time and allowing us to be with them during this time. Thank you. Thank you to the first and thank you to my co-moderator, Abeka Boniface. All right, uh, Angela, thank you so much. I would like to reiterate uh, the fact that uh, our uh, seniors and uh, the panelists have been so good to us and they have given us our time. I know they are very busy people and it's quite really not easy to, to get the hands of these people and uh, you drag them to a session like this. This is quite a good sacrifice and uh, we would like to thank them uh, profoundly for this sacrifice that they have made. You know, as uh, leaders of a profession, you know the profession is only strong if it has uh, assured channel for uh, getting new members to it. So uh, this is one of the ways that uh, we are trying to see that uh, we have the new members of the society and the pharmacy profession. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for attending. For questions that have not been answered, we shall uh, channel them to the panelists and they will answer at another time. Uh, I think at this time I would uh, call this meeting to an end. May God bless you all. Let's go and serve humanity uh, for God and my country. Thank you. Bye bye.